Since I've been looking at that program, Forge and Fire, I've been wondering when they were going to get into that, get, going to get into this. I've been really wondering about it. And I see that they're going to start doing it, but they don't realize What have we got going on here today, John? Oh, we're going to put a butt plate on a butt stock. Model 1842. The wood that they leave in there when they take it off the machine, see? And we got to remove this in order to get the butt plate on it. section in here we don't want to take anything off of these edges because I cut the already to where it's supposed to be. Notice you have your tool set to pretty low RPMs there, John. It's not. I said uh, I notice you've got your uh, tool set to pretty low RPMs. It's not scorching the wood. No, it does burn it a little bit, but. Yeah, 
That's all right because we're going to fill it up with fiberglass anyhow. You got to seal this wood up because it's open grain and moisture can get in there and change things around. In other words, you put the butt plate in there and about three months later you find the butt plate is moved off or moved around someplace. So you put a little glass bedding in there? Yeah, you got, like I say, you got to seal it. And they did that back then too, but they used shellac. They didn't have fiberglass. But they shellac them pretty heavily. Keep keep it from moving around. Also, they left the wood cure for about seven years up in an attic or barn or someplace like that. They had barn for it. Now you see, I gotta move it in there just a little bit. A little gap here and there. This is going to come off here. Yeah. Why do you start with the butt plate, John? What's that? Why do you start with the butt plate, fitting the butt plate first? Because it's the most difficult to put on, and if you make any mistakes, you're not out a lot of doggone time. A lot different making a military gun than it is making a uh, Kentucky rifle or something like that because if you make a mistake on a Kentucky rifle, you just change it a little bit and keep on going. You don't have that option with this. Everything has to be right the first time. This area up in here, we're not going to take any wood off of here. We're only going to move it from here, here, and maybe in here to bring it in to flush it up with this. A model 1842 is fairly easy to do because it's just flat all the way around. You get into a model 61 or 55 or something like that where you have a curved butt plate and it becomes a real job and a half. It's almost like a whole day's worth of work. And you have to be extra special careful because because of the curve and it can be moved in a wrong direction very easily. We do it the very first thing because 
it is actually the most difficult to do. So do the hard thing first. If you make any mistakes on it, bad enough the way you're going to have to pull the stock away, well, you just out the price of the stock, not out of the whole lot. So you can see where it's hitting here, here, and here. So you got to take and remove little places like this. Here's where we cut just a little bit too deep in there. That may give us some trouble. But maybe it will be able to cut. See, this one here I won't pay any attention to at all. But this one up here I will because I want to move everything that way. And I'll finish it up after lunch. Just a little bit at a time, right John? Yep. Just a little bit at a time. You don't want to take a whole lot real fast. But like I say, these where it shows an indication here and here, I won't touch it. It'd just be here, here, and here, all the way around here, and try to get it in there as tight as we can, around here and here. This plane, don't touch anything at all on this plane at all, because that's the thing you're using to line up with. It's a 90 degree angle when you're trying to fit it in like that. With a curve up plate, you got all kinds of uh, little curves and loops around and everything else. Another thing you got to remember about Dunlap stocks is right here. This square block they put in here, it's used in the machining of the stock to begin with because it's too long so they got support in here. But it also serves a dual purpose. It's the very, very last thing you remove from the stock when you're building the gun. Because it serves a major, major, major importance. And that's it right there. To hold it in the vise. Take it off and you got all kinds of problems. Because the thing wants to roll and everything else. So I see you got good support. If you put this underneath of it, we got good support for when you put the barrel in, the lock, and all the rest of it. That's why this piece of wood in there is the very, very last thing, even after all the final sanding and everything is done, then it is removed. Okay, lunch. We'll get this one to the toilet. Uh, we're making a film on how it take what it takes to put a butt plate on. Take a look at this one now, buddy, and see if you can they do something about it. How long does good work take, John? Well, to make one of these things? Mm-hmm. If I worked at it steadily, I could knock one out in probably about a couple of weeks. It just takes as long as it takes. That's right. You got it. It takes as long as it takes. You can't rush craftsmanship. How many times might you put a butt plate on and off? Could be as much as a hundred, I don't know. I never kept count on it.
actually it's starting to come. Nice uniform. You got one little problem right there when the machine is stuck. There's a little teeny dip in there. And I um, don't know whether I'm going to be able to get that out of there or not, but I'm going to try. It's getting there. There's no secret, is there, John? You just have to fit it and sand and fit it and sand. Yeah, files, chisels, gouges, everything you can think of. You have to come in. There you go. You want a nice, even, uniform print? Yep. Very much. There's a few spots in here on the original machining. Didn't quite, this one got a little bit too deep right there. But evidently it's going to be pretty close to being all right. Pretty close to first time out.
Okay, now. Oh my god, that's, uh, that's pretty damn square right there. I'll put these blocks of wood in there for you. See, these are pine and it's much softer wood than warm. That way the block of the vice won't mar the wood. This goes down in there about that far to allow for the screw to get started. Also, it acts as a guide for the tapping drill. I got a few off to make sure that she's going pretty true in there. That tells me how deep I'm going to go to. Gives me my depth mark. Okay, boy.
lights off or else we're going to blow out the hole. See, they put these little flats on there. And I didn't clamp it wrong, all right. Okay, I'll loosen them up. Now, you know, when it taps up, you have oil, but you can't use oil on this because it's wood. So you use wax. So far, so good. Now, I use one of my more favorite tools here. What you got there, John? That's the torque wrench.
at the bottom. What would you say to people that had stuck butt plate screws, John? What's that? What would you say to people that had stuck screws? They need one of those, right? Yeah, they need one of these. Well, if you worked in a factory, you got one. Well, the factory, of course. how big the head is. Well, that's a big one. Yeah, I almost designed for one purpose and one purpose only. See, you bring it up to my stomach here, and I can just take it right on out. Real easy, like that. Right? No substitute for the right tool. That's correct. So, put the butt plate on. Here's a tool of John's own invention, a modified shopsmith for horizontal drilling. Now we can move this table up and down, but we can't move it this way, so that's where we get into a problem. Oh, the big problem is if I can get this thing in there with a half inch piece of it. Pretty tricky device you got there. Once again, making 
making sure it's square to the work. Look at you, right on the square. Nice and square. Take it out of the then. This old tap is about worn out. I gotta make it in. Got a screw loose? Yeah, a big screwdriver. Why is tapping the worst part, John? What's that? Why is tapping the worst part? Because you're moving wood. Removing wood and moving it, you're also compressing it. That's what it's doing right now, is compressing the wood as well as tapping it. Okay, hi. Maybe the last time. We shall find out. We shall find out. Real quick, honey. Here we go, folks. Set all the way around. And now, 
back screw, and then we is finished with this job. Okay, now, let's see how those screws fit in there, real nice and flush, see? all the way around on both of them. Yeah. That's a good job, John. Uh, if, you, if you did this with a hand drill, they get all over the place. You know, is it one side will be up and the other side will be down, or it just doesn't fit nice and flush. So see, you put it in the machine, you get everything nice and squared up. You notice how nice and tight the doggone butt plate is. It becomes real good and tight. So all we got left to do is to seal it up so it doesn't get any moisture in there. And that's where we put the fiberglass in there. Now you may ask me, well, how did they do it back then? Exactly the way I did it now, except they had machines that was designated to do one job. One job was to cut out for the butt plate. The other job was to drill the one screw, and the other job, other machine was to drill another screw. And then the uh, guy that had to put it all together just screwed it up, and uh, that was about it. But uh, we have a little bit more sophisticated equipment, because these machines can do many other things besides just what you've seen here. But basically, that's what they did. They had a vertical drill for the top screw, and a horizontal drill for the bottom screw. And that's the way it was done. Thanks for the insight, John. Mm -hmm. See you next time.